We are on. We are so glad to be with you today on this beautiful first day of November. We are glad and we want to say God is good. Can everybody here say amen? Amen. God is good to us. We got some things going on here, and if you happen to be watching this and want to come and join us a little later, you're sure welcome to. We have some events going on today. Uh, Sister Land is going to share. We're going to have it on a separate video and some games and music. And uh, Ricky has worked on a game. We've got several things going. But we're, we're glad to be here. In first place is Jesus. Amen. So we're going to celebrate him today. We will not have Sunday night service tonight. There will not be one for us. And we'll just make mention of a few other things we got going on this month. Uh, for the community Thanksgiving in Russellville, we're getting together the pumpkin pies. So please work on that if God so leads you. And it is a blessing. Again, they're taking it around with the folks. There won't be an actual in-person dinner. They're taking it around. But uh, if you can make that, uh, they appreciate any of those. And if you can kind of give me a number a little bit, too. I probably need to give them a number pretty soon as to how many we're going to be able to bring. So let me know, you know one way or the other. Text me or let me know some way that uh, you'd like to bring it. And we'll be glad for it. And uh, we know it'll bless, bless the folks. The shoe boxes. I see some have already, have already had about four shoe boxes back there. And uh, sister, this is impromptu, but can you share about that for just a second I with sure us? Can. Uh, we had we have sister Linda to share with us real quick about the uh, Samaritan's Purse oh. shoe box program, and we'll have her share on the camera here. Just real, real quick here. Praise His name. It, it is time to collect the shoe boxes and as many as we can to get started to fill them up. The dates and the times that we're going to be collecting them to return them into the uh, the center is uh, November 16th through the 23rd. The last day is November 23rd. So now is the time to get your boxes and get them filled up. Um, we've got all the shoe boxes you need. If you need one, let us know. Um, it's just an awesome blessing for, for to be able to provide Christmas to those who won't have a Christmas. Choose a boy or a girl, ages two to four, ages uh, four and five to nine, and ages ten to fourteen. Um, it's just an awesome blessing to be able to provide Christmas for kids that won't have Christmas. So grab you a shoebox, fill it up with whatever fits in there. Uh, Non-perishable items, a, a toothbrush, a, 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 a fuzzy uh, teddy bear, something that's like a wow gift, and uh, some socks, and, and, and all kinds of stuff that you think little kids would, would like, toys, no war items of any kind, but, but uh, little figurines like farmers and, and, and animals like that is great, that'll fit in the shoebox, and uh, it's, it's what a blessing. You'll be blessed by doing it. So get your shoe boxes and fill them up and turn them in and, and be blessed, y'all. Be blessed. Amen. Thank you, Sister Linda. One other thing we'll announce today is that we will be having our Christmas time coming up, too. Isn't it an amazing event? Christmas is coming up soon. So uh, we have a sign-up sheet in the back for any that would be interested in bringing some stuff that Sister Ruth put back up there. And incidentally, we are praying for several today that are not with us, Brother Gary and Sister Ruth and Sister Laura, several others, and we realize there's the quarantines and different folks, Sister Jamie. Oh, we're just praying. We believe for good for all the needs. We're praying for you out there. And let us know you're watching. Love to hear from you. All right, God bless all the kids. I know the kids have something going on. So God bless you guys. Aaron, I'll get a little feedback if you turn down the, the, the non-use mic. Appreciate that. John chapter 14, if you want to follow along with the scriptures. Appreciate G. Ann's help today getting this up. John chapter 14, and we're going to begin in verse number 1. And I call this simply today, home. Amen. Home. Aren't you glad we have a home? Amen, yes. It may not be what we think, but we have a home. We have a home now and later. And in John chapter 14, Jesus is just about to go to the cross for us, just about to rise again from the dead for us. And he's talking to his disciples and saying something very important that they need to hear, they need to take to heart. And that, that message is, there's a home for you. Don't worry about it, there's a home for you. Let's read this passage and, and go from there. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. 
In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for your word that assures us in times of great difficulty that you have a plan that you're working through and you have a home that you're making for us. And we ask right now that you help us to take these words to heart, for you're the only one that can. Holy Spirit, you're invited to work here, and we love you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I remember back, holidays coming up, around the, that time of year when you'd have all the folks come in, and we used to meet at my grandparents' house, my dad's parents, and they would all be gathered in there. And it was, it was amazing how many people could fit in that little room. It was a little den, and you just get all the people come in. You'd have some that come in, and they'd talk for a while, and some that come back out. And they would, they would you know, just talk back and forth. And uh, if we had troubles, one time I told the story about where the fan broke. It was the holidays coming up, and the fan broke, and my grandma fixed it. It was chaos all over that itty-bitty little room. But it was, I tell you what, we got through it, and nobody got hurt. It was home. Good times, bad times. It was a home that we could enjoy and be with. But it was sad when both of my grandparents passed and the home was empty. And it was it was not the same as they were going to get ready to sell it. It was something that, it was a little bit of a change. It was a little bit of a reminder for me too that we do have houses and places here, but the things in this life are temporary, aren't they? They're temporary. As much as we love and appreciate the good he had that, that's here, and the thankfulness that we should have, everything is temporary. We need a permanent home. I'm reminded of that today. We need something permanent. And so how do we prepare for that? That's what I want to share with us real briefly here with us today. First thing I want to encourage us with from verse number one, don't stay troubled. Don't stay down about it. How many know it's a lot if you watch the news, you can stay down about it? In this year, and not to mention the virus, but if you've been watching any news lately, in just a couple of days we have the election. And there's a lot of folks that are predicting hard things to come after this election. And uh, both, both the Christian and the non-Christian, they're predicting a lot of stuff. And I just want to say to us, it's enough to get us troubled if you're, if you're thinking in the natural. It's enough that it probably could get anybody down. But uh, what does Jesus say? The great trouble of all, Jesus going to the cross is coming up for these guys. And what does he say to them? Don't be troubled. Don't let it get you down. Don't stay in this place. Um, we can, but it, it is it's easy to stay down. Many people will, as a pastor, I get it, and you probably have too, what you do, people will share stuff of all types. I had one woman one time, at, not at this church, at another church, she shared with me about her, her daughter passing away, and she was greatly grieved. How do you comfort somebody with that? How do, you, how do you reach down and, and work in something like that? Because it's very difficult. But I want to encourage you, even if we don't know what to say, I'm thankful that Jesus is still with us. Amen. God can use us to say what we need to say and do what we need to do if you're going through something and encouraging somebody through this. And if I read this verse, as we see this here, there is a choice. Let not your heart be troubled. Uh, I want to encourage us that even if we're going through stuff or helping somebody else go through stuff, guess what? You can make a home through Jesus Amen. right where you are today. Amen. You can be at home with him. You can help somebody out even when you maybe are not feeling the most at home or maybe the feeling the most uh, with, without comfort yourself. And uh, Christians, we don't have to run around in fear because Jesus is with us. And I want to encourage us, as soon as you can, as soon as possible, maybe even this moment, you can take your troubles to the Lord, and you don't have to stay there. There is a choice that you have, and you can make yourself a home in your heart for Jesus. Because how many of us know, we have all troubles of all types, but really the number one need of our soul is not just to have those needs met, it's to have the need met right. of Him coming in our hearts and changing us forever. If He's done that for you, to live for you, to make Him first place in your life. Because you see, it really is about trusting and believing. And in verse 
1 and in verse 2, that's what I want to encourage us. We trust. We believe. And trust may not come easy to you. And if it doesn't, you're not alone. You're not alone today. When I was a little baby, they told me, I don't remember any of it, but they tell me I would cry a whole lot if I was ever away from my parents. They got My mom got ready to go back to teach after her maternity leave, and they took me to the babysitter, and I cried all day. And then I cried all day the next day, and the next day. And they finally gave up because they said, he's just not working with anybody else. It's going to have to be you. And so my mom had to stop teaching, stop her work, and, and take care of me. Because I, 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 don't, I, I don't remember any of it. It's like, you people, I guess, I don't want to be with you. I want, I want the, the people I trust. Right? You ever maybe been there? Maybe not quite like that. But sometimes it's hard to trust people. And Jesus says, yes, I know it's hard to trust, but I've done everything possible so that you can trust me. Jesus has. He's done everything that you and I need so that we might trust Him with everything that we've got. Well, what has Jesus done for us? He lived His life to show us how to live. Did you know that? If you read this book, if you read the Bible, you see that Jesus lived the life to encourage everybody in the help that they need. If you read this book also, you know that He faced death and gave His life for us. He wasn't murdered. No one took it. He was willing to give His life for us. To lay it down for you and for me. And not only that, he didn't stay dead, but Jesus Christ rose again and lives forever and ever and ever. And he's not only done all those things, but he's with us. He didn't just leave us behind and say, well, I'll see you in a couple thousand years. No, he's with us always, the Bible says, even to the end. He's with us in this room today if we reach out to him and touch him. And so what I'm saying to us today is if you read this book, and believe what it says. And we could go into further things, but you know, you look at all the, the proof that Jesus did all those things that I just said, even outside the Bible. We know that Jesus has done everything to earn our trust so that we can make a home with Him. We can trust Him, even in the, the midst of times of great difficulty and concern and, and the feeling of just restlessness. I, I just We just feel that this year that we're living in mm -hmm. restlessness. And, and the... the the uh, folks are just at, at, with, at a poor ease in every kind of way. But Jesus has done everything to give us hope. There is hope. And when we trust Him as our Savior, we have not only a way to have a better home here. Yes, He works here. But we're going to have an eternal home in heaven. Because when you look at verse 2, what does He say? There's many mansions for us up there. There's many dwelling places. There's one for you. There's one for me. And I wouldn't have given you any kind of hope if there wasn't. I just say, well, that's it. But he says, no, I'm telling you. I'm telling you now, there is hope for you. There is hope for a home. Because anything in this life that you have doesn't necessarily make it. doesn't last. But when you build a home, when you work on those things that matter for heaven, it's forever and never, ever ends. It's our forever home. That's what God wants us to trust him with today. And so we, we want to make And so what does that mean for us? We need to make sure that uh, we... Build those things that matter for our eternal home. We trust for our families. Many of us have families that don't know Jesus. Amen? Oh, it doesn't feel like home sometimes if they're not living right for God. But what does he say here? Trust me. Trust me. You believe in God. Believe me that I've got your family. Believe me that I've got the people that you care about. He says to trust him. He says to keep believing for our, our own lives. He also says... That there's a house that you can come in and, and be with me. I'm, I'm thankful for heaven, but I believe when things are going well, it's hard to get much closer to heaven than being in the assembly of the saints and in the church house. I believe that when we're with God in church, this is like a home too, where it should be. And maybe somebody's watching, or maybe somebody's here that's been hurt in church. A lot of people they have they have times when when somebody has, has really let them down. I would encourage you, don't give up on God's house. Don't give up on the home that he would make for you with the assembling of his people. The Bible says it this way, as we see the day approaching, we need his church house, the assembling together, even more than we did before. And so I encourage us, this can be a place, this can be a house for you, if, if not this house, some other good house, some other good church. And I just encourage us, don't give up on God's people. We trust and believe in those things that build up something forever and not just for a short time. So we want to keep preparing us, preparing ourselves, preparing for what's coming. 
I've had the privilege for many of you, many folks here in the church, certainly not everybody, but many folks have been able to visit their houses, right? And I've been to a lot of folks' houses and gotten to pray with folks in their houses. And I've seen some pretty nice houses. And it's neat to see what people do. Everybody has a little different home and a little different way that they set up and they prepare for. Them. And it's good to do that. I believe it's good to set those things up. But just in the same way that many of us, we take good care of our homes here, how many know we need to be working and preparing our heavenly home and setting that up real nice so that when we get there, Jesus is doing that for us. We can do that too. We can prepare a home for, for ourselves coming up very soon. Very soon. And uh, I just encourage us, those things that we do when we work and do blessings for others, when we give of our money or our time, when we encourage our families and build them up, because how many know the family can be some of the hardest ministry, right? Yeah. When you do that, it's, it, it's mattering for eternity. You're building eternal treasures for yourself. And I, I just encourage us, we prepare ourselves. And, and another way we can prepare, and I did want to say this, is uh, even with his, as the process of voting and working through that. No matter how you're rooting for, who you're rooting for for this election, whoever you're cheering for and whoever you voted for, how many of us know that it's all temporary, right? It's all a temporary thing. People come and they go. And we're never going to have a perfect country in this United States. No leader that you vote for is going to make this a perfect country. Amen? Amen. We, may, we, we have the people we support. We have the people we believe will do, will do better. I have yours. You probably have yours. But we want to understand that we got to keep Jesus first place and not let it be like, well, a politician is going to save us. No, who saves us? Jesus. We let him make the home. Yes, we believe him for this country. We want to see a better country. We want to see this and work toward that. But I do encourage us that it's never going to be perfect here. And we make sure to realize that our home, our ultimate home is not the United States of America. It's in God's country. Amen. Amen. Up there with him forever. And ever. That's, his, that's the true country that he has. Well, why is that? Why is heaven so good? In verse 3, it talks about that. He's saying, uh, why heaven? It's like, he doesn't tell us a lot about heaven here, but he's saying, guess what? Guess what? I'm going to be with you forever and ever. And that's what you need to know. I'm going to take you to be with me. That where I am, you can be too. And that doesn't seem maybe like a lot right there, but that's a beautiful thing to say. Oh, and the yeah. reason is this. It's about him and knowing him. It's not about the streets of gold. It's not really about the mansions. It's not really about all those things. It's about Jesus. It's not about the what or the when or the why, but the who. Yes. The who. Uh, your Savior today says, I want to be with you forever. Because really, heaven is about relationships. Yeah. Yes, we're going to see all our loved ones and everybody that's gone on and passed on before us. But there's no relationship by Jesus. And in fact, that's really what makes a true home. Did you know right. that? His relationships, his home, and, and knowing someone. And the ultimate relationship is knowing him in your heart yeah. and building that up. If you do know Jesus in your heart, that you don't neglect that, that we don't let that relationship slide just because of everything that's going on or just because of this or that, that we make sure that he has a home in our hearts because it's really about knowing him. Yeah. And then we don't know what's coming, yes, but it's going to be all right. You know what? He's right here. He's going to be with us every single Amen. step of the way when we trust him and make it about him as our home. But as you see, Jesus, home in our heart, there's nothing like that. My relationship and your relationship with him is the most precious possession you have. Amen. Amen. The most precious thing that you have. And we want to develop that. And so we stay on the road. We stay on the road. Verse 6. Uh, Thomas was always asking questions like, I don't know the road you're on. And Jesus says, yes, you do. It's me. Jesus says, I'm the road. I'm the road. And again, going back to what we've already said, it's about Jesus. It's about knowing him. But we want to stay close to him and not detour. I mean, no, the detours can get us into trouble. Right. The, other job, the other job that I do here is I work for the county. I work for the county. It's what's called the waste coordinator. And sometimes I have my things that I've got to do and picking up trash and taking care of recycling. And I realized if I get on the too many detours and I turn my truck around and I pull off, sometimes that can get me into some trouble. You know that? If I, if I take too many detours, these old roads in this county are busy. 
Even the little roads that kind of wind like this in Logan County. If you go back and forth, you'd be amazed how many cars are on those little old roads. Yeah. And I've got to be careful taking too many detours. And so if we're on the road home to see Jesus, we need to make sure that we stay on that road. If we're taking too many detours off to the side, off from what we know his plan is, it can be a pretty scary thing. We need to stay on his road. And he is the road. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, we're searching for truth today. I preached another message on this. Oh, we, want, we don't, people don't accept truth today. But I tell you what, if we accept Jesus today, we can have that truth. He will show us truth. He will show us the way to go. We know the road. It's, just, it's, it's serving Jesus and knowing a person. Just as we read today, maybe you're going through something today. Maybe things don't feel like home at all. Even when you're in your house, it doesn't feel like home. I encourage us, weep it may be through the night, but joy comes in the morning. God has joy for you and for me as we trust Him. I don't like to talk too much about things like what I'm about to share, but I did it. God did give me something one time that just encouraged me. When I was going through something like this, He gave me a dream of, of heaven. And when I had that dream of heaven, I felt like a child running around back and forth, just so glad to be home, just so glad to be with Him. And I just want to encourage us today. I pray that God gives us all just a great revelation of just how good it is to know that we have a home in heaven forever and Amen. ever and ever. No one's going to take that home away. Not going to burn down. Don't need insurance. Don't need to have to worry about anybody coming in and breaking in and stealing. God has a home for you and for me. If only we will trust Him today and stay on that road with Him. He has a home. And, and I just encourage us to stay with Him and uh, just continue to look, fixing our eyes on Jesus, on the home that He has for us. Because he has a mansion for you just ahead. It's coming. He's coming soon, y'all. He's coming very soon. We need to stay on that road with him because he's coming and it's just ahead for us. I want to pray for us today. I want to pray for you. If there's anybody here that needs to, or if anybody's watching this today, and if they need to do that, they need to get ready for their forever home. And then we're going to have uh, Sister Alana come and she's got something she's going to share with us too. But I want to pray for you today. If everybody will bow their heads as they have the ability to today. Father, I just pray for everyone that's listening to this and the sound of my voice. Lord, you have a home for them and you have a plan for them. But there may be some that have strayed from that or taken a detour where they shouldn't have. And they're far from home. I just pray, Father, that in the name of Jesus... You show them yourself today the way back. That Jesus, you reveal to them just exactly who you are. And that, Lord, you be the God that pulls them in. I can't save anybody, Lord, but you save and you draw in today. And you deliver today. And I pray that for everyone, that, the, that you show them through the Spirit what they need to do. If they need to make it right today with you, that they will. That they will, Lord. I just pray, Father. That you open hearts to receive your message today. Because salvation is found in no other. No other but Jesus. I just want to ask with heads bowed and eyes closed today. If there, is there anybody here that maybe needs to turn their life over to Jesus for the first time? Or maybe you've been straying far from home and you need to, to give it to him. Is there anybody, is there anybody here that with an uplifted hand say, I just need to make it right with Jesus today? No one's here to judge you. Jesus wants to minister to you today. Anybody here? If anybody's out there that needs to make it right, in that room where you are, Jesus is there too and he's showing you the way to do it. I just would like to, to everybody that would be willing to today with us in the congregation, would you be willing to repeat this prayer after me for anyone that's here? Would you do that with me? And I'll pray it in phrases, and I just encourage you to repeat this. Father God, Father God we, come to you we come to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to make a home. I want to make a better home. 
with you. With you. And today, and today I, say, I say, you are the way. You are the way. And I will stay on the way. And I will stay on the way. I will look to you. I will look to you. The author. The author. And finisher. Finish. Of my faith. Of my faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For making a home with me. For making a home with me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for those that prayed that prayer. In sincerity and those that need it, dear God, today. That Lord, you be their comfort, be the home that they can, can go to, Lord, always. I pray that you give a realization of heaven in our hearts. That yes, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we see Jesus and shout the victory. I pray that for everyone today. That Lord, anyone watching today that needs to make any, any sort of decision for you, that they will do that. And we love you for it, dear God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He's good to us today. He's good to us today. And we love you. And we just are praying God's blessings for you. We're actually going to come back up live with another video in just a moment. God bless you.